Hi, it's Daphne. Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be going through all the books I read in September, aka my September wrap up. The first book I finished in September was The Cartographers. I absolutely love this cover, so I'm happy I finally got to it. So this is a story about Nell Young. She is a young woman who is into map making and the art of it and the history around maps. Her father was in the cartography department in the New York Public Library and he was recently found dead in the New York Public Library in his office. And there's mystery around that. Like what happened? Was it a natural death? Was he killed? Her and her father have been estranged for years um, she was working at the library with him early in her career and she brought some things to his attention that she was excited about. Some cool maps and this gas station map from like 1960 something, I don't remember the year. And he freaked out. He said, this is useless, worthless. Like, why are you trying to say this is important? And they got into this huge fight and he like shredded her career, basically like blacklisted her across the entire industry. No one would hire her. Now her father's dead and there's this mystery around it, and she's trying to solve what happened. She finds that same gas station map that they had this huge fight over in his secret like compartment in her desk that she knew about in his most beloved like carrying case where he carries all his most precious maps. It was something his wife gave to him who died when Nell was young. So she's like, why did he keep this gas station map that we had this big fight over that he ruined my career over in his most precious case in his secret compartment did he die over this so she starts looking into it and i'm not going to spoil anything because there's a lot that happens beyond that but she starts looking into things and she finds like on the dark web that this group called the cartographers is buying these this specific version of this map from this specific date buying them up and they're just disappearing or being destroyed and she's like what is happening there's a huge interesting mystery with that. There are elements of fantasy and magic in here, which is cool to see evolve. There are also maps within the book. I would say it's very intriguing. I was like, hmm, oh my God, what is happening? Like throughout the story. So it was really fun. I will say though, once for me, once I got past the big reveal, I did lose a little bit of steam. It was a very unique story. I had an interesting time and yeah, I would recommend it. It is a lot about maps. <laughs> like maps isn't just like, oh yeah, it's like, it's about maps. It's like a lot about maps, but yeah, it was very unique. So I would definitely give this a try if you're intrigued by the premise. I did enjoy this, but I did end up giving it three stars. Solid read, but I don't think I'd read it again because now I know all the reveals, but I'll probably hold on to it for a while because the cover is just beautiful. Then I read Aphrodite and the Duke. This is a historical black romance that takes place in like classic London ton, the Beau Monde, you know, that whole like Bridgerton world. And I just love that we are getting these settings with more diversity. So I ate this up. This is like lovers to enemies to lovers story. So Aphrodite was in love with the Duke of Anders when she was growing up, like they're mm, kind of close in age and they were going to get married. Her parents made her wait until she was like 18 or whatever. And then all of a sudden he ghosts her and he marries some other woman. So she's heartbroken. A few years go by, maybe like three years go by and Evander is now a widow and he's come back in town and wants a second chance with Aphrodite and it's their story. So there's a lot of things that get revealed with like what happened with Evander, why he abandoned her, and there's a lot of uh, family elements in this. Aphrodite has a huge family so I could see how this could become like a longer series. I did enjoy where the plot was going with this but I did struggle with the writing style a bit. I wanted there to be a bit more tension between the couple and the description aspects of the writing style were lower than what I wanted. So it was kind of hard for me to visualize scenes, what was happening, but I think the author has really good potential and that's a skill that she could definitely hone as she continues writing. I mean, I think she has written a lot actually, but for me, yeah, I just wanted there to be more description. Yeah, actually she has, she has a lot of books, but <laughs> yeah, it needed more description. I was like, where are we in the world? It was just heavy on the dialogue, but the plot was cute. The idea of the romance was cute. And this is like the story that I needed. I need to see more diversity and books like this in the classic genres because, you know, I can relate 
to the stories with like people that don't look like me but like it's amazing and even more relatable to see someone that looks like you so great for that i gave it four stars on goodreads but it's probably like a generous 3.5 if i'm being honest then I finally picked up Punk 57 by Penelope Douglas. This book is so hyped on romance booktube. So this is a new adult romance. It takes place in high school. Both of the characters are 18, they're seniors. They were pen pals in elementary school. Their classes were doing this thing where the boys would write to other boys in a different school and the girls would write to other girls. But because they have unique names, our male hero is Misha and our female hero is Ryan. So the teachers got confused <laughs> and they ended up matching up as pen pals and they continued to write to each other after years. Like after the assignment was over, they just kept writing to each other until, you know, their senior year in high school. They like love each other, but they're not like romantically committed to each other. They promise not to look at each other on social media and things like that because they wanted to keep the purity of this pen pal relationship. Misha finds out who Ryan is by accident. Things are happening in his backstory with his life. So he's in her high school all of a sudden and he's pretending to be somebody else. And they're, they are just like magnetically crashing into each other all the time. Ryan thinks they're enemies. He's like, who is this guy who's going by another name? Um, and why am I attracted to him? And he's looking at her like, you're not who I thought you were. Like in the letters, you seem so different, but in real life, you have this other persona that's like this catty, bitchy, cheerleader, mean girl, you know? So he's mad at her, but he's still like obsessed with her. And their chemistry was so good. The tension was so good. And I just ate it up. I gave it 4.5 stars. It was way better than I anticipated. And I didn't feel like they were young or childish at all, even though they were 18. I did love that they were 18 as well. So as an adult, I don't feel icky like reading like steamy teenager stuff because it can be weird. And I'm just not into like underage. Like I know it's legal to be 16 in some states or in some countries, but like not for me. I don't think I'm that interested, <laughs> but to each their own. Uh, so I did like that they were of legal age and I really enjoyed the chemistry. It was very dark. Misha is like a dark mofo at times, can be kind of aggressive and abusive, but like it's a romance book, so we eat it up. It's toxic IRL, but like I had a great time. So you learn more about the mystery. Some of the parts of the mystery could have been more purposeful, but like I had a great time. It was very fun. I would definitely recommend. <laughs> And it just makes me more excited to read Penelope Douglas in the future. So I'm gonna pick up more of her books, hopefully soon. Then I read Orange Volume 2. So this is a sweet like sojo manga series. It has two main volumes and then a third future volume, which I'll also talk about. I'm gonna pop it up here as well. So we can just talk about both at the same time. So in this premise, there's this friend group where one of the boys is really struggling with like depression. His mother had committed suicide and <clears throat> he's having those same kind of thoughts because he has a lot of guilt around why his mother decided to do that. And the female heroine, I forget her name, who's in love with him, received a letter from her future self stating like all her regrets and all the things that she needs to do differently in her timeline to fix the errors and to save this boy so he doesn't unalive himself. Um, so it's a really sad, heartfelt manga series. And this second volume concludes that plot line. Um, and I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it more than the first one. I felt like the characters grew a lot and I felt like they had more actionable approaches to the situation. Whereas before, like the girl was very hesitant about making changes. She just kept kind of making the same mistakes again because obviously she's the same person, but the friend group really came together and I had an enjoyable time reading it. Then the future volume is basically just the alternate reality, like the reality of the boy surviving and then the boy not surviving and how the friendships like intertwined and like how the relationships changed within the friend group. So there was another male character that was in love with our heroine um, and he ends up married to her in the timeline where 
the other boy didn't make it and that's not a spoiler it's very obvious in the first volume um and then you see the timeline of like when the boy did make it and he survived and how everything turned out and it was a small volume the future one but i liked it i had a good time it did jump in time back and forth a lot which was sometimes confusing but it was still really sweet i ended up giving the future volume four stars the next book i read was wicked cravings this is book two in the phoenix pack series so this book has to do with their beta wolf dante and a new wolf in their pack jamie so in the first book like their packs kind of combined with another group and jamie is new she is seen as like a submissive type of wolf but it turns out that's not true she's got these very dominant characteristics as well but they're suppressed because she's having issues with her internal wolf like this is a wolf shifter series so like people turn into actual werewolves her wolf is like traumatized like she's had a very traumatic experience in her past so her wolf is like very savage and wild and dangerous so if she lets the wolf out she's scared she won't be able to come back as a human and she'll go like feral and have to basically be put down like that's what happens in this world so she has like a tight lock on her wolf she like never lets her out and it's damaging her like psyche both as a human and wolf so dante is obviously attracted to her there's this whole aspect of like true mates and mates and all this stuff too in the series and he's attracted to her but he thinks they're not meant to be because he thinks she's submissive so it's them learning more about each other and falling in love and jamie's like obviously obsessed with him because she's attracted to him too but she's sick and tired of him not paying her any attention or giving her the time of day so she's like you know forget you and as soon as she says forget you dante's like wait a second now you don't want to like be obsessed with me even though i've been rejecting you now i want you like you're mine like who are you talking to don't talk to anybody else but me even though i've been rejecting you this whole time <laughs> and it's their story and dante comes a long way uh, of becoming a better partner and man and i just love how much he loves jamie um and seeing that whole backstory with her trauma and yeah there was a lot of interesting things that went on i am enjoying this series a lot i do want to get to the third book in the series as well i ended up giving this book four stars and i would definitely recommend the series i'm having a good time then i read flawless by lc silver so this was also really popular like right now in romance booktube i got this off of caitlin's recommendation from the love librarian so i was very excited to give it a try i ended up giving it four stars so it was a solid read but like my expectations were like really high so i don't know if they like met my expectations necessarily so this book is between red and summer red is a bull rider and summer works with her dad as red's like pr kind of agency i don't know the technical terms but red is in trouble because he's kind of blown up some of his biggest company sponsors particularly like milk <laughs> which i'm vegan so i was like ah whatever fuck milk <laughs> but uh for the people in his hometown and in his country in canada there's a big industry around farming so people were really mad that he was hating on milk um and his company sponsor for the milk dropped him and summer is responsible for basically babysitting him through the rest of the season so they can fix his image and get his sponsors back on board so she goes out to his family home she's like staying with him and his dad and his brothers like on this big ranch it was really sweet like it was like will they won't they he's into her she's like i gotta keep it professional it was really sweet and he's like an older guy he's in his 30s so his body is like really worn down from doing this demanding physically demanding career of bull riding he has a lot of issues he needs to get through with like being a mature man and realizing people are worried about him and his safety and it's not just like middle child syndrome you know whatever it was sweet to see both characters evolve so i did enjoy seeing him evolve as a character because he did like i said have a lot of issues with maturity and them falling in love and i am intrigued to continue the next book in this series is going to be about his older brother who's a single dad and summer's best friend from home I think that premise sounds really cool and I think it comes out like fairly soon. It might have come out recently. Another interesting book. This is a dark romance. It's called It Ain't Me Babe. This is a part of the Hades Hangman series, which is like a dark motorcycle cult. Not a motorcycle cult, but like cult and motorcycle club romance. 
So this story is between River, aka Styx, and Salome, aka May. So May is in a cult, like in the middle of the woods in Texas, and Styx is a guy that grew up in a motorcycle club, like his whole life. His father was like the president of this MC, and he's destined to like take it over. So when they were young, when May was maybe like eight, and Styx was maybe like 11, Styx was out in the woods with his dad, like getting rid of some bodies. And he goes wandering off and he comes across this big fence and he sees May there crying like behind a tree, like along this fence. So Styx has like a speech problem where he's practically mute. Like he's pretty much mute, but he can only speak stuttered speech around his father when he's alone with his father and when he's alone with his best friend. He sees May, like I said, at this fence and is curious like why she's crying like who's this beautiful little girl like he's a little boy too so it's not a big deal he finds that he can speak to her like he's stuttering he's struggling but it's more than he can speak with anybody else they have like this instant bond and she feels connected to him as well like she's in a very unsafe place but she just was intrigued by this little boy as well so they only meet the one time and then something happens and they like his father like calls for him and he has to run off and they never see her they never see each other again because she's trapped in this cult and he has no idea where it is so his whole life he's been thinking about her trying to find her because he's like this is my third person this is the third person i'm able to speak to like she's special like i need to find her but he can't his dad won't tell him where that location was because they're always like dumping bodies like in random places and the dad wouldn't give it up the beginning of their adult story starts off when Things go too far in the cult for May. So May has sisters in this cult and some terrible things obviously have been happening, but it's gotten to a point where she's like, I need to get out of here. So she runs for her life and manages to escape and ends up at the doorstep of this MC club. Just coincidentally, Styx immediately recognizes her um, and it evolves from there. It is a series and it goes through different men in the MC and the other some of the other women in the cult so i am intrigued to continue i can't rush into the series because like it's emotionally exhausting to read about the the traumas that these people go through uh because it's very dark in not like a fun way like in a like oh my god this is dark not in a like this is toxic but i'm eating it up you know i ended up giving this book four stars yeah i ended up giving it four stars so i did have a good time overall and seeing the growth and everything but like i wouldn't recommend it lightly because it is heartbreaking but yeah read it if you're emotionally available for that then i dnf two books i'm not going to go into detail with them but i'll just tell you what they were the first one i tried to read but dnf was broken bonds this was a part of a readathon that some of the booktubers i like the romance booktubers i like were doing so it was peace love books aka jessica live a novel life i forget what her name is Sam Reads a Little, Oh Hey It's McKay, and That Tall Book Girl. We're all gonna read like this six book series. So I wanted to give it a try. It's like a reverse harem thing, but it was just not vibing with me. Um, I didn't really like the writing style and I didn't like that all the guys in her harem because it's like predestined or something, hated her. <laughs> I was like, I'm not vibing with this. So I just DNF'd it. Then the next book I DNF'd was Baby and the Late Night Howlers by Catherine Moon. This is also a reverse harem series with like wolf shifters and like, it's like alpha beta, omega verse type stuff. Um, but because I had read a few werewolf books, I didn't like how the omega verse was working. It just didn't make sense to me. Like it would be a pack of like a ton of alphas and a couple betas and like omegas were like cherished. Like they were like, what everybody wanted in their pack because they're like the most coveted sexual versions of the pack like pack members um, but i just didn't think it made sense to have five male alphas in one pack it just doesn't make sense to me i didn't like it and i didn't like the writing style in this as much as i liked the writing style in her other series i just was not vibing so i dnf'd quickly because i'm picky about my werewolves apparently and then the last book I read in September was another manga, and this is Sweat and Soap Volume 1. This book is so sweet. It's nice to be able to read an adult manga. So this book is about Asako and Natori. I think those are their names. And Asako is quite sweaty. She works at a 
like soap company in the finance department and she loves all of their products and she's like very self-conscious about her sweating so she's always like touching her uh, self up in the bathroom like with products and stuff by the company and just making sure she's fresh and clean and then this guy Notori works at the company as well but he is like the company's celebrity he is the star designer of a lot of their products and scents and he sees her one day just comes across her and gets a whiff and is obsessed he thinks she smells like the best thing that's ever crossed his nose and he demands of her that he needs to smell her every day for like a week leading up to this big presentation he has to prepare for he needs like a new idea for their next big launch and he's inspired by her so she's like his new muse and it's their love story and it's actually it, like the premise is weird but it's actually really sweet asako is like very shy she doesn't have a lot of experience um with love but she's like very open and understanding with his obsession with her and it's just really sweet and i ate it up honestly you could just read volume one and be content i do have volumes two and three i did read volume two in october so i will tell you about that in that wrap up there are 11 volumes mina from mina reads read this series i assume she read all of them i'm pretty sure she did and she loved it so that's where i got this recommendation from i don't know if i'll buy all of them this year but maybe i'll collect them slowly like maybe i'll buy a batch here and there while i'm in the mood um, but yeah i'm really enjoying it so far and it's really nice to read adult manga for a change because they do get steamy too which i like because I'm a grown woman that loves sexy romance. So sexy manga, I'm like, yes, give me everything that I want, yes. So those are all the books I read in September. I hope you enjoyed. You can find me on Instagram at Daphne Ginn if you wanna chat books with me. I love getting messages from fellow book lovers. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe down below if you haven't already, and I'll catch you in another video. Bye.